Who of you has pet at home? Please raise your hands. A dog, cat, guinea pig, rabbit, yeah? Do you like your little furry friend? Does it give a lot of joy to you? And for those of you who used to have one, do you remember how did you feel when it died? In most of the cases, we know that something is going wrong. When your dog is looking at you like this, you know that this is a time to go to the vet. But for instance, with cats, things are not that straightforward. They love to hide what they think and how do they feel. In the situation with wagging the tail, in dogs, it means happiness, joy, and invitation for play. And in cats, irritation and feeling unsafe. So understanding animal state of mind, it's a matter of interspecies communication. To become a vet in Poland, it takes five and a half years, over 150 exams, and hundreds of hours spent cramming, studying hard, not sleeping, and sacrificing your private life. So finally, we don't only study about one species like traditional doctors do, but at least about five species, which are dogs, cats, horses, cows, and pigs. And if you would like to specialize and become a qualified European diplomat, you need to complete one year of residency, one year of internship and three years of residency. So if you have an eye problem, in human medicine, you go straight to ophthalmologist, but vets are everything. So we are expected to be a surgeon, radiologist, obstetrician, dermatologist, and sometimes even we are psychologists because the owners share with us with their own problems. Okay, can we pass back? Okay, so we don't only study about this typical species. How can, actually, as you can see on this picture, we also study about some exotic birds, mammals, rodents, reptiles. And how can you say that your hamster is sad? That your guinea pig is unhappy and maybe has headache? So actually, they're even harder to communicate with. And if you think about the Christmas carp, he can get sick as often as your goldfish. Imagine the world without vets, not a thousand years from now, but here and now. Bees. Bees are dying by millions, and we cannot help them. So imagine if the vets cannot heal animals, how it, went, it will affect your comfortable life. They're dying by millions due to bee colony collapse disorder, which is mostly caused by parasitic mites like Varroa destructor. And why treating them is so difficult? Because all the drugs we'll use will poison the honey, and they're very, very persistent to these drugs. And imagine, in some of the places in China already, people are hand-pollinating fruit trees. Another example, do you like beef, milk, cottage cheese, or yogurt. So we also not only work with pets in pet industry, but we are also responsible to support whole food industry. So you're safe going to the shop and buying a sausage or yogurt and not be afraid of parasites, bacteria, viruses, or fungi. So we even use a special term, a grace period, this is at a time that animal products cannot be used by humans until they will be finally free of drugs. We also work with wildlife, and this is a very demanding and difficult job. Actually, already, ivory poachers gunned down 90% of elephant, elephant population in Central Africa. 
ivory and rhino horn is worth as much as gold in a black market, and there is only 23,000 rhinos left in the wild. So if we want to start communicating with other species and trying to take care about these, what we don't see in any, every day, your children probably in one day just see these animals, like elephants and rhinos, just on the pages of an e-book. Look at this patient. This dog has osteosarcoma, and it's, it was treated with chemo and, and radiotherapy. And this is a very hard thing, because we struggle with some ethical issues every day. And I need to decide if the treatment of this patient will help and to give this animal longer life, and how about its quality. And if you see a chest x-ray like this, seeing a cancer there, you need to decide to start palliative treatment or to try convince the owner to euthanasia to end animal suffering. And we are the only profession in this, in this country legally permitted to, to perform euthanasia. And it's a very big burden. Imagine the whole family crying after they beloved drugs, or an elderly lady with her geriatric cat and it was all what was reminding her of her late husband. It's such a terrible burden that from 2009 to tell, to, until to 2011, the suicide rate in female vets raised in 11%. But despite the dark side of being a vet, there is a lot of joy, and successful delivery or caesarean section gives always a lot of happiness. So we can both make two species happy, bring back the smile to owner's face, and help the animal. And if you work with some very rare species, seeing live a Rothschild giraffe, one of the very rare species, is one of the best reward. So when I was actually working on this speech, as many others, I was very curious, actually, what Google says about vets. So if you put into Google, vets are, this is what you'll find, mentally ill, too expensive, crooks and greedy. Thank you very much. Really, this is what people think about us. <laughs> and mentally ill, yeah, I need to tell you that. It's such a big burden to support whole family or the owner in very hard decision to make, to perform euthanasia, the high, we have the highest suicide rates from all of, the, of other professions. And too expensive and greedy, yeah, people still think that we are charging a lot, but comparing to human medicine, when we have insurance, which mostly covers all of the costs, we just don't think about costs, we still undercharge our services, and I also find pretty funny website. There was today some speech about dating and the stereotypes. So I found a website pointing the reasons why to date a vet. And there were 15 reasons, and despite some obvious ones, like we are very hardworking, we are very devoted, and we are passionate about our work, they were my favorite three. Vets have very high hygiene standards, but doesn't mean, actually, like, if your girlfriend treated a sheep last week, she will smell of sheep. Vets have seen it all. Nothing crosses them out. But it also means that your girlfriend will have no sense about appropriate dinner conversation. And my favorite one, scrubs are cute, but not when they are covered with pus, urine and feces. So, this is a picture of me, actually, last year on my birthday. It was March, minus 10 degrees outside in a cow farm in the middle of nowhere. And my teacher said, Oh, Natalia, if you would like to warm up, you can do some cow rectals. It's almost 40 Celsius inside. It's very tempting. You can warm up. So, I need to forestall your question. Yes, everybody has to do this. <laughs> But despite the stereotypes, this is not something that we'll do for most of our time. That's just a funny story from university years. But actually, for some farm vets, it could be their daily routine. So I chose the vet to be a vet 
To become an interspecies communicator, sometimes my patient, all they can show me is just the fear and anger, and communication with the owner is very difficult because owners are very emotional about their pets. Sometimes they even treat it like a family members. So I choose to be a vet to follow the footsteps of animals and try to bring back the bond between animals and humans. Do you think you're ready to join this interspecies dialogue? Just open your heart, look around you, and try to read the message animals are sending to you with their eyes. Go to the surgery on the right time and make my work easier when it's not too late, so I can really help. An animal's eyes has the great power to speak a great language. Thank you.